Hi, I'm here with the University of Lincoln to talk about your life for the upcoming few months and your exams for A-level and BTEC. I'm here with... I'm Molly. I'm a psychology student at the University of Lincoln. I'm Ben. I'm a film production student at the University of Lincoln. Uh, I'm Jamie. I'm a journalism student. And I'm Cash. I'm a history student at the University of Lincoln. So I say first things first, we should talk about each of us, what we were thinking during A-levels. What was our mindset like of the, of the few months before A-levels, the exams? Well, for me, I kind of got into the routine of doing it from like Christmas onwards. So that Christmas was kind of when I said to myself, right, I'm going to kind of crack down and focus on it. So I got myself into a routine and I'm a very organised person. So I liked having my weeks planned out and what I was revising when. Yeah, so I think it's important to have a plan and like over Christmas, like Molly was saying, it's like you start at Christmas because we had mocks in January. And then after that, it was sort of like have a plan all the way until your exams. That was like important to make sure you are organised. But I don't think it's not too late to start now. I feel like a lot of people feel the pressure that they haven't started already. But I'd say no matter when you start, the fact you are starting and getting into that routine is the best thing. So if you start a month before exams, January, Easter, as long as you have started, you're doing yourself a favour by making that first step, which is often the hardest step to make. And I feel like the first step can even be just looking at the requirements and things into the courses that you want to do for the university. So I did like loads of research on the university website for Lincoln and saw like what my history course entails and like what I'm going to be studying. And if that kind of gives you, I guess, a stronger sense of like what you're going into and I guess in a way getting yourself excited as well, because it shouldn't be a daunting experience. You know, it's, it's like exciting. So I think the question on everybody's minds in the modern age with our TikToks, with all the Instagrams and uh, social media is, is how do we stop the procrastination? You know, so many things are trying to grasp for our attention. How do we say, you know, get out of here. I need to, I need to revise. I need to work on stuff. I have a few tips and tricks. So for me personally, I always, with my plan on my day, I'd always like have at least an hour or more what, that I would like dedicate to like, I don't know, scrolling on TikTok or doing stuff that I enjoy. So it's like me time. So like I don't think throughout the day of like, oh, I've got to go home. I've got to revise for like eight hours and go to bed. By giving myself like an hour of like relaxing time and to do what I want, then I feel more at peace. So like when I'm revising, I'm like, oh, there is something nice at the end of this. Like when I'm done, I can have that time to myself to relax. I used to have to put my phone in a different room where well, I'd be like constantly <laughs> on it. I mean, my mom was so bad. I had to like, when I turned it off, it took like five minutes to turn back on. I was like, oh, just... Just do what? Well. <laughs> yeah. I think it was important, like, to like really like cut it into bits. Like, if you if you just said I'm going to revise like history, for example, you'd like really struggle. But if you said you were going to revise like a certain topic or like a certain part, then I think you're more like to be able to do it. And I mean that helps you. You've got like a certain idea in your mind of what you're going to do. And it's a good idea to know the exams. So you know the exams. You know, say you know history one exam has got this sort of stuff on it. And so you're not too bored if you're taking on all of history. Definitely, because it's. It's all about balance when revising and organising yourself. So it's really easy to be like, okay, that's it, I'm going to sit down for an hour and I'm going to revise. But for a lot of people, that's not helpful because who can focus for that long? I definitely can't focus for that long. So there's this technique, isn't it? The Pomodoro technique for revising. And it's like you work for 25 minutes and have a little break and then you keep you work another 25 minutes and have a break and in between these breaks you go downstairs make a tea talk to your mates um do you know what I mean like have good breaks where your mind is completely off of what you've just done for the last 25 minutes mm -hmm. and it in a way it brings you back to when you actually have to go back and do your work from that break a bit more stronger minded you're not as tired because like breaks are so helpful when revising I don't I, I cannot do what other people do well like some do when they just literally sit and revise for hours on end like it's so tiring for me especially I prefer doing exams but for one of my A-levels I had coursework so I did A-level drama and there was some coursework attached to that so I found it a lot harder like writing the essays and writing about because I found that you I didn't have that like time crash like this is an exam I need to know everything for the exam it's kind of a more steady thing. So again, it's just about like, I know, dedicating like, I know, five minutes every day. So like for me, I found really helpful for like the coursework aspects is to take five minutes every day after my lesson or something to like write down quickly, like reflecting on myself. 
so that you've got that information there. So when it does come up to near the deadline, you've got most of your information there. You don't have to like think, oh, a few weeks ago, you know, what did I do? How did I reflect on it? How did I make it better? It's just having that information there already, I found was really helpful and helped me stop procrastinating when it came to writing. Because, you know, starting the writing is the hardest bit. Mm. And if you've got that information already, it's really going to help you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I procrastinated a lot at the start, and then like I did a like a re- whole revision schedule, and then you're like you kind of like force yourself to do it because it's like if it's on like the to do list for the day or whatever, then you feel like you have to do it, and that I get that's the way I sort of got over like struggling to get focused to do things is like I guess I kind of like forced myself in a way that I had a structure of what I needed to do each day. Yeah, it's like setting goals, isn't it? So on my to-do list or something, I'd be like, okay, if I get this done, then I can literally sit and rot on TikTok for two hours. Do you know what I mean? Or I can make myself, like, a really nice big meal for lunch or, you know, just having... I feel like these little goals, even though they're small and things like this, but even, like, okay, if I get this, like, beginning of an essay done, even half of it done, I can go out, go on a walk, clear my mind a bit, come back, finish it. Because I feel like it's easy to... I definitely get this. I don't know about you guys. When writing an essay, I'll start really strong and I'll be like, okay, everything makes sense. Then because I get really tired, everything just sounds like waffle and nothing actually makes sense. So I feel like having a, a break and, yeah, setting those goals is is the key. Yeah. With the like, list thing again, I personally find it really satisfying ticking something off a list. Like on the Notes app on my phone, like it makes like a little vibration when you tick it off. I just find it so satisfying. So it makes me kind of want to do it more because I know I can tick it off and I know it's done. Don't have to think about it. Done. That's what helps me stop procrastinating. Just the thought of how nice I will feel when it is done. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so important as well, like not to overload yourself. Don't have so many tasks on that list where you're finding it impossible to take them off. Do you know what I mean? So Because you don't want to burn yourself out. Burning yourself out happens so much, especially when revising. People get stressed out, of course. Like, it happens. But I feel like having these breaks and, like, making it realistic, to, like, um, to-do lists or whatever and ticking it off and, you know, it, it's a lot... I don't know about you, but it feels... Like like you said, it feels so much more that you've actually, like, done something and achieved something. Let's just say you did overload yourself. If you overloaded yourself during the A-level exam period, how did you relieve your stress? I journaled... <laughs> like, I know that sounds weird but or like because yeah it would get on top of me and I'd get really stressed out so journaling or I'd FaceTime my best mate or go on a walk get some fresh air uh, or if I'm getting like really stressed out about it I'd change subject and go back to that subject another day because like with English so I did English A level and it's a lot of reading and a lot of poems and things like that. And when I just get so tired from it and I felt really burnt out, change the subject. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, you'll get to it and you'll do it. You'll chip away at it, but don't burn yourself out. Yeah, I had, so I had, like, one or two times, like, really close to, like, a month before A-levels where I just burnt myself out too much because I also had a part-time job while doing my A-levels as well. So what I did is I just took a full day off I just took a full day off, didn't think about any of my exams, didn't think about work, didn't think about nothing. And that just really helped because it was such a time off for my like body and my mind. And it was quite free and refreshing. So when I came back the next day to doing revision, I was so much more like happy to do it. And I wasn't like, oh, like I want to die. I don't want to do this. And I tried to like get out of my house as well because there was some point where I kind of associated my house and my desk with revising and with A-levels. So I just wanted to get out of that space and just have a nice day off because, yeah, A-levels are scary and the exams are important, but you still need to, you know, be happy and, like, live your day-to-day life and have some motivators that to keep you going for it all. I completely agree about the um, change in environment so like you said I associated my desk in my bedroom during A levels to work and it got to the point where I was in my bedroom and it wasn't like my safe space you know so even escaping from that or making it a certain area so after it made my bedroom a bit like awkward to be in because it was just like where I would revise I'd like make a spot downstairs in my dining room or something and that was where I was going to revise that's where I'd sit and do my essays and then I can go upstairs and like Wrote, like I said it on TikTok in my bed or something but yeah I feel like change of environment is big like mentally because then you're getting used to that place being the place you're going to revise at and do like some good work like because it's not always quantity it's quality 
yeah you can do loads and hours and hours on end but if it's just you doing it for the sake of doing it because then at the end of the day you can say oh I've done five hours worth but and it not be the quality that you need like for it to stick in your head or whatever and it's not worth it yeah, one of the things we used to like what you were saying about like having a space that we used to like we, the group of us at school we used to stay in like in sixth form and like revise for like an hour or so even though we're all doing different subjects but like being all together revising at the same time is sort of like you felt like you had to revise because the person next to you was revising yeah. um and like just doing it at school rather than like coming home and doing it you had like it was like it was still work in a way rather than coming home and doing it that's true even now like i just if i want to get out and do work i go to the library because i see everyone else super like i was gonna say the same yeah, yeah. Like, all these people like on the grind and i'm just there like on my phone thinking come on i got like, yeah. 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 no literally and especially the oh i love it it's the third floor in the library the silent floor <laughs> everyone's silent everyone's got their heads down so i'm like I, I physically can't go on my phone because everyone around me is looking so like like into their work so i've kind of got to do it they're judging yeah. me no yeah literally i'm like oh no i've got to do yeah. so especially like with the chair bits when it's got like the borders around so like you can't see what the person's next to you doing because I'm really nosy, personally. So, like, when I'm revising, I'll just, like, look what my friend's doing if I'm, like, revising with them. I'm like, oh, what are you doing over there? But by the fact I can't see anyone else, it's just me, this little cage of revision. <laughs> and it actually does help me to concentrate because there's no distractions because all you're looking at is your revision while you're in the library. Yeah. yeah. And I think, like, doing lots of different types is, like, helps with trying not to get burnt out. Like, rather than, say, just doing, like, just flashcards or, like, just exam questions or whatever, if you're doing, like, a few different types, then you, you don't get burnt out as quick, I guess, because it doesn't feel like you're doing the same thing over and over again. But I'd say definitely don't do revision the day of the exam. That is a mistake, and you will get get into work to get yourself Flip, worked yeah. out into a deep hole, because I'd just stare at this piece of paper yeah. and be like, oh, my God, I don't remember that. Oh, my God, I don't remember that. But when I'm in the exam, I do remember mm. it. So you're just stressing yourself out a bit much. So I did chemistry, for my, like... We did loads of things like synthetic roots and stuff. I just like make a massive mind map of like all the different possible combinations. I just like stuck it on my ceiling. Mm. So every time I went to sleep, it was just there and I was looking at it while That's I was slowly good. dreaming about it. Dreaming about <laughs> synthetic roots, oh, of course. Mm. Yeah, like we were talking about before about like, because we did essay subjects, oh, yeah. about how like, you, you always, no one likes doing exam questions, but like when it's like essay subjects, you kind of just have to do them. And it's like the flashcards are really helpful, like remembering the information. And I did lots of flashcards, but then it's like, for guess for like applying it and getting good at the exam part of it, it's just like revising and like doing exam questions like yeah. repeatedly, I mean. With our essay kind of style courses, like I'm doing history now, it, it's not as much about just, I mean, it was an A-level a little bit about knowing all the dates and things, but it's a lot about applying detailed analysis and critical thinking to these events and what's happening and deeper within it. So past papers were literally one of the big things. And also for like events and stuff, I was a poster girl. So kind of like yours on top of the bed. I just loved a big mind map, highlighters, colours. It just, I don't know, making it pretty maybe what I remember it all. So yeah, for me, like mind maps is that I'd like colour code everything. So like every subject and like every like module or stuff within that subject had a different colour. It just helped me visually so I could be like, oh, that's for that. So I could like separate them in my head. And I still do that now with like my modules at uni. So like each module does have a different colour. Like it gets the same highlighter, same pen, like the fold is even the same colour. I just find it is very cohesive and it's nice. It might sound silly, but it helps. Yeah. Like it helps like remember things. Maths is blue. Maths, Maths is blue. Maths is blue. Maths is blue. English, English is yellow. Yeah, yeah, that's what's I had the other way around in my high school and when I did A levels, maths was yellow, English was blue. No. Oh, no. What? And it's history. Red. History is red, yeah. Or yeah. like a burgundy. <laughs> yeah. And green. Yeah. Green. What school did you go to? What geography? <laughs> that was geography green. was green. Geography was green, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you mentioned like mind maps, how you did like I used to use mind maps quite a lot and like mainly like probably the main thing I did was like obviously like in class we made notes. And then, like, after that, I'd condense them into, like, a one or two pieces of paper. And then, like, I'd try trying to, like, keep condensing my notes. And that I guess that was kind of, like... Because then you're condensing it, so it's, like, easier to remember. And you still link it with different pieces. Like, you talked about the mind match with, like, linking things with colours and everything. And, like, just trying to, like, condense notes. And then you... Because you can't revise from, like, four pieces of paper and notes. But, like, you're more chance from, like, two or one. It's really hard to get started on studying or revising. So we each need something that motivates us. 
So what motivates you guys? I found that a friendly bit of competition with myself or my friends, which again, like would be like, oh, like let's both try our absolute hardest. Whoever wins by the other ones are drinks, like gets the best grade, which probably isn't the best advice, but it did help. And it is a good motivator, like that friendly competition. And also just the thought of once I've done this, it is done. I've got three, four months of doing absolutely nothing. That like the thought of that and then my holiday, I had a nice holiday booked over the summer. Like just the thought of the niceness and like peace I will have after it really motivated me to do well. Because then while I was relaxing, I'd have more of a peaceful mind, be like, I did my best. I tried really hard. I can just relax now and not have to worry. I mean, the thing that motivated me one time, I don't know if this is a good thing. Once. <laughs> Once. No, no. It was actually a really big bit of like uh, English work. There's this guy in my class who used to really annoy me. He called me fat once. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> and so he was like super smug about how good his writing was. And we had like a thing to do. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to absolutely grind this so I get better than this guy. I'm going to absolutely spend all like week grinding this. And I did. And I got better than him. And, he, and we got our results back. We got, well, we got our results back. He, <laughs> and he like looked at my work and he went, oh, you got two more marks than me. And I was like, Yes. <laughs> Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Only one time, though, he got better than me all the rest of the times. But I think maybe people need to cut with, like, healthy motivations. Yeah. I think I'm just, like, really competitive. So I was, like, I just, like, had to do well. You know what I mean? It was, like, in my head, I was, like, well, I, I just need to do well. You know, I mean, that's kind of maybe that's how, like, I sort of motivated myself. And, I'd like, like, I was on a really, like, to-do list and stuff. Like, if I had, like, a list of things I should have done in that day, I'd, like, you wouldn't feel like the day was done until I'd finished them. Um, and I guess that sort of like spurred me on to like, oh, well, I'll just do that this 10 minute bit of revision just because it was on my to-do list to do. Um, and I feel like there's little bits like that or like giving yourself like a reward or something like something to eat or something after you've done your bit of revision you need to do. That's just like, like if you've got something to do after you've revised, I think that helps you get through it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can't lie, a competition did not work for me <laughs> just because I'm a different learner to my friends so my friends would be extremely smart and be naturally smart and intelligent whereas for me when revising and things I need to put in the hours to get the good grades whereas you know or I don't know if you guys have those friends that were like I never revised last night I didn't revise at all and they come out with a stars and I'm like guys I spent all week revising and I've come up with a b but you know what that is good enough for me you know so sometimes competition was not healthy for me. Like, that's that's what what exactly. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Especially maths, like some people I'm just maths come so naturally to. Yeah. And for me it just didn't. And so my friends are like not revise and get like an A star. Mm. And so maybe you just need to try or try and, you know, challenge yourself. Mm. Be better than yourself. I definitely wouldn't if your friends are like that and like naturally intelligent I definitely wouldn't like compare yourself to them yeah. and be like oh and just be like sad and be like oh why you know aren't I like that why can't I get it like that you've just got to like kind of appreciate that different things work for everyone and like everyone's different and like what they're good at is different so you've just got to kind of just appreciate the difference mm. yeah my motivation was mostly like knowing that all of this work is going to lead me to a job that's going to pay well or like do you know what I mean or so for me, at the end of my A-levels, I was like, all this work is going to go to me going to uni. I'm going to have the best time at uni, make friends. Obviously, going to university is so romanticised in um, movies and TV shows or whatever that when you go there, it's going to be great. You're going to party, you're going to make loads of friends. But I think, especially now coming to uni, the reality of it is, like, sometimes people can get lonely, you know? You can have lows in university, but my motivation was literally university, like even with the lows and highs you're independent you're you know you're living by yourself away from home my motivation was that I mean obviously I love being at home but just doing something that's completely different than being in school and having certain routines like I get to pick my own routine at uni you know like I get to pick my own breakfast I can't I don't have to have what mum's for you know um that was mainly my motivation it might be silly but like I think even no matter how silly your small motivations are, it's what pushes you, you know? And like we said about comparing, don't compare what your mate's motivations are, what goals are. Everyone's got different goals at the end of A-levels. And if your goal isn't to get all A-stars, it's to get what you're good at or like what you can get, which are Bs, then do like you know, do what's best for you and not what's best in your mate's eyes and things like that. So 
A-levels are such an uncertain time for certain pupils and it really helps getting in contact with somebody who's already in the position they're going to be in a year's time. So you mentioned to me before about an app called UniBuddy. Yeah, so when it came like a few weeks before my exam, I had heard like through the Uni of Lincoln, like I saw some emails about UniBuddy. So I went on it. So you can connect with people from your course. So I went on, I searched psychology. So it was like a few weeks before my first psychology exam, which was my first A-level. I was very scared. But but I just went on uni buddies and I think it was like quite late like, at night at this point. So uni students, they're up, they're awake <laughs> at this time. They were ready to help me. So I just kind of messaged one of the psychology reps and I was like, hey, like, you know, I'm thinking of coming next year. And, you know, I've got my exam in a few weeks. I'm quite worried you know I'm not sure if you have any tips or tricks for A-levels because obviously they'd been through it themselves before so like I'm kind of in their position now whereas I've already been through it and now I'm helping Mm, others so yeah I messaged and I got a response really quickly she was like it's fine like it's okay and just gave me some tips so she talked to me she did mention the Pomodoro technique to me she was like that's really helpful she just mainly kind of said just not to stress too much because at the end of the day, no matter how much you revise, you can't control what comes up on that paper. Mm. At the end of the day, it's just what happens, happens. Mm. But yeah, no, it was really nice and supportive to have someone from, you know, the uni you are going to go to after these exams, just helping you out. Also, as students, they're going to tell you it honestly. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're, like that's what I loved about that, is they're going to tell you exactly what you want, like, not exactly what you want to hear, but, like, all the information you want to hear. Yeah. You know, so that like they are where you want to be in like a year's time. So yeah, they they tell it so candidly and so honestly. They have the like. tea. Huh? They spill the tea. <laughs> they, they will spill the tea. Yeah. So imagine in front of me is a magic door, and I have a magic key in my hand that opens this magic door, and on the other side is yourself during your A level exam, your your build up, or even your exam period. What would you say to yourself? Well, I'll first take the key. Are you ready? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just it. Perfect. So my A-level self was only a year ago, quite recent. Um, I'd probably say the main thing I'd say to Molly a year ago is to enjoy yourself, have fun. It gets better. You know, after your exams, mm. it is happy. You know, it's a time to be excited. You know, you're young. And I'd say definitely just enjoy every moment because even though you are doing exams and it's long and it's stressful it is okay it all works out at the end you know what you've written in that paper there's no point going home after an exam and moping about it because what you've written you can't change it you can't change what mark they're going to give you you've just got to accept it and kind of move on mm. but yeah definitely i'd take yeah. each day at a time and just tell her it does work out got into uni of lincoln doing well so yeah but I will pass on this key. I'm like, do I not get it? No, you, you got no. it. No, All right. Um, <clears throat> I would say uh, that the answer to question two on the maths paper. No, I don't even remember. <laughs> I don't even. I literally have no idea. I'm, I'm talking about maths. I don't know. I'll just be like, uh, I don't know. It's it's tough. Pass the key. <laughs> <laughs> I was like haggling about not having it. I guess anything. I would say that, um, you know. It's hard and that's fine. And, you know, you can only control what you do and not what happens to you. So just go in there, do your best. That's all you can do. And kill it, man. Maybe the thing I'd say was, like, it won't be as bad as you think it's going to be. Like, yeah, yeah. in your head, like, you how much you work it up. <laughs> Thank you. It's like, it won't, it, it's not as hard or as bad as you have it in your head. Mm. Um, and like what you were saying about trying not to stress too much. I think, like, I think I needed, like, a bit of stress to, like, make me motivated but like you don't need to stress too much because it is like whatever you come up with your head of how difficult it's going to be I mean like you always like you always feel fairly prepared you know what I mean like by the time you've actually got there so. yeah I would agree uh, I think I'd say oh to my A-level self this was like three or four years ago um probably not to stress and like there's a lot of opportunities after A-levels you know um I think it's really easy to get swept up in like exams and like I was like just like this tunnel vision. Well, I definitely was in this headspace where I was like tunnel vision of like my exams, like not really looking at after A levels. But I mean, obviously, I had to look at like universities applying and things. But it's easy to get yourself wrapped up in it. And I think I would tell myself just to like remember the good times they're coming. Like you know, there's like a 
there's a light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing because yeah it's like stressful exams and of course and it, like you said it can be good stress like it can motivate you more but um yeah I'd say for me it was not good stress it was all bad but um I think I tell myself to not worry as much and like know that there's something great coming out of this in the end Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean like people are doing their a-levels or b-tech and things like that so they can get into either universities or other opportunities like remember like you're doing this for a good reason and it's gonna be fun at the end of it you know over the next few months we have multiple offer holiday days where you can come and take a tour of the university and the city um does anyone did anyone come up to see Lincoln before they went to Houston? Yeah, I did, because, like, it's a historical city, you know? Um, and me being a lot of lover of cathedrals, I was like, I have to come. Um, so, yeah, I came for the day. It was really nice, because we brought the dog, and there's, like, a loads of, like, dog-friendly pubs and things around here. And it's really pretty up to the cathedral. So we've got like steep hill and it's like all cobblestones and it's just, it's really pretty. So yeah, we came up for that and oh, the cathedral is beautiful. And we saw the castle, which was really cool. I think it was like uh, used in like William the Conqueror's like time. And yeah, really historical. I mean, that's just me being a history nerd coming up and having a look. That's what that's so good about the offer holidays. Is like you also get to like look at like the city, like you said, yeah. but you get like a nice look at your course. Cause like, I know on ours, we they showed us like all that because I do journalism. They showed us all the equipment they've got, and like a few of the lecturers were there, and you meet some of the people that are on your course, and like really sort of show what you will be doing at uni rather than because like obviously you have an idea what you're going to be doing, but the offer holidays you sort of get a proper experience of what you'll do when you get to uni, uh, and like what like opportunities might be there. Uh, once you get there and I think mean, that's what they're really helpful for because like, not only you get a look at like the city you also get a look at what your course is going to be like you can make a day of it you know yeah and they've got some like discounts and stuff I remember on mine when I came up like all the cafes like within the uni and stuff and like some even in town as well had like off holiday day discounts so I found that quite cool so it was just like a nice little touch mm. And, universe. and the freebie tote bags. <laughs> yeah. I Freebies. love it. I love a tote bag. Yeah. So yeah. Tote bags. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it was brilliant though, but it's it's like it makes it exciting as well. Especially like when looking at universities, like coming on the holiday day just makes it all surreal. Like you've done all that work and all that graft and A levels, like holidays are fun. Like come and check it out. So we hope you found our conversations useful and our advice as well. And all of us here at the University of Lincoln wish you a stress free or just the right amount of stress, A-level exam period. Go down to the comments below and leave some of your advice for dealing with stress or some exam tips for everybody else. And uh, thank you very much. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Good luck.